All right, today I'm gonna uh, change out the diff in my coupe. So currently there's a 25 spline, two pinion Borg Warner diff, a Borg Warner 75. And in it I've got a Borg Warner 78, which is a 28 spline, four pinion uh, LSD diff out of uh, X8U. So I'm gonna put that in today and I'm also gonna put in some lowering blocks. So we'll get started. So this is the diff that I've got. This has got 3.45 gear ratio compared to what I've got in my diff. Um, I'll show you the stills of the ratios. So I've currently got a 3.08 and I want to speed it up a bit because I've got a top loader. So we'll put that in and I've also got some lowering blocks. So this is the two inch lowering block kit. So currently, this is the ride height of the coupe. Um, so there's still a bit of a, a gap there and I want to take it down two inches. So I've got the car jacked up. Um, I've got to replace this leaking um, fuel retainer right here. Um, I had a go at it, but it's not working, so there's a bit of a leak which I've got to fix up. So that's the fuel sender retainer. And so now uh, what I'm going to do to take the diff out, I've got to take the brake lines off first. So I'm going to... Uh, First of all, take off so make the camera in there. I'm going to take off so I'm going to take off this brake line and take off this brake line fitting which is this brake line fitting here, which is just a, a 3 8 screw, and then that brake line holder up the top, which is so there's a, a holder which is a 7 16 screw, which you can't really see, but I'll, um, I'll take it off. Alright, so the diff is free. I've taken off the brake line breather holder where the lines go to both calipers and then just the shackles for both sides. So now we're just going to jack the diff up and then we'll just wiggle it through the springs and it should come free.
All right, so we've got the diff out. Um, we've also taken the um, tail shaft out. So the one on the right there is the old tail shaft, which is to suit a top loader and a BW75 diff. The one on the left is for a BW78 diff, and that's actually out of a EF uh, Falcon, a manual Falcon. So cross fingers, hopefully it fits so you can see it's got the uh, flat flange at the end, which is a easy way to tell, um, particularly on the diff side, whether it's uh, uh, a BW75 or BW78. So this is the old BW75, which is a two pinion 25 spline LSD diff. And then you can see here, this is the 28 spline four pinion, and it's got that flat flange on the back. So easy way to tell. So I've got the diff in the car. Uh, I've got the lowering blocks in. Now I've got some more uh, rubbers on order, but uh, they didn't come in on time. So I think I'll just test this. And I've got a pair of shocks too, but I want to test this setup. And then um, if I like it, I might go to lower leaf springs. But what I had to do was um, just undo each of the shock um, supports and then use a bottle jack to jack up the spring so I could get them in. I really should have given the diff a bit of a birthday, a bit of a paint, but to be honest it could be stuffed. So um, I filled the diff up now just until it's dribbled out the top there with uh, this Penrite Pro Year Fully Synthetic Oil. So what I'll do is I'll uh, put the cap on it. Um, I'll have to bleed the brake line. So the, uh, the brake line fittings are exactly the same from the XC Borg Warner to the, um, the an XH um, Borg Warner. So that was pretty easy. Um, I've removed the handbrake cable. So you can see the cables go there. I'll um, put that cable in afterwards, which I'll just probably have to weld a uh, a bracket in for it should all be good and then I've got to fix my leaking fuel sender which is like the second go but I'll do that tomorrow I've taken the fuel sender out and I'm just cleaning around here with sandpaper and then I'm gonna put some uh, special adhesive to stick the seal in place so see here this is a uh, fuel sender so I've just cleaned around the edge here with a bit of sandpaper just a bit of fine uh, PA 100 sandpaper and then I'm going to stick this new retainer and clip uh, the old seal isn't bad um, I think there's a bit of an edge so I must have pinched it at one point when I put it in but we'll put a new one in and we'll give it a go So the new retainer is in. I've just used a bit of uh, gasket sealer that's fuel resistant to hold the rubber seal in place because I think I've pinched it before, that's why it's late. Um, it's really fiddly to get in there, but it's in. So we'll see how that goes. And this is the um, gasket dressing and sealant, which is fuel resistant that I use to hold it in. So it's the next day, I got the diff in, uh, you can see there the lowering blocks. Um, now, they were a bit of a pain to get in, but we'll see how it goes, we'll see what the ride height is. I've also put the new fuel sender retainer in and seals to stop that leaking. Uh, bled the brakes. So now what we'll do is we'll lower it down. Um, but yeah, you can see in here, there's the new, so this is the new fuel retainer and seal. Bit of a pain to get in, but I used a bit of uh, adhesive, some fuel resistant um, gasket adhesive, just to make it sit in place. And I put some fuel in and jacked it up to make all the fuel go to the front of the tank and it's not leaking, so we'll see how that goes. So let's lower it and see the rod height.
Yeah, right, so that's the final result. Quite happy with that. That's pretty mean. It's definitely, uh, there's definitely enough room in the guards. So I can put my hand up and under, which is fine. Um, I think the next step is to take it for a spin with the new diff ratio and see how it handles with it lowered. That's pretty mean. Stay tuned for the next video when we take it for a spin.